No Dragons Fatigue by Jean E. Penswall and Martine Goldbutt. One warm sunny day at the end of last week, my mom and I went for a walk to the creek. As I raced down the hill in my little red wagon, I veered to the left and it's back into a dragon. I suppose he could see there was fear in my eyes. As I jumped to my feet, quite filled with surprise, I sheepishly grinned and stepped out of the way, but he seemed so polite that I asked him to play. He had a cute bear and some other toys too. With my shovel and pail, we have oodles too. We ran to the creek and then onto the bay where we played on the beach for the rest of the day. Then mom waved and said, now it's time to go eat. Let's pack the red wagon and head up the street. It's hard to stop playing with friends old or new. So I asked if the dragon could come in to eat too. Mom wrinkled her brow and squinted her eyes, looking up at the dragon's incredible size. I begged and I pleaded then said very sweet, we won't make a mess, we'll be tidy and neat. So at last she said, yes, just this once I'll agree. You may have the dragon come over for tea. We had carrots and apples, thick slices of ham, with fresh homemade biscuit and strawberry jam, cold glasses of milk, a great big dill pickle, but the pepper with sprinkler sure made my nose tickle. Then the dragon's nose twitched and he started to wheeze. His eyes misted up and he blew up a great sneeze. Achoo! Well, we all know what happens when a dragon achoo. Flames shot from his mouth and from both nostrils, too. Our tablecloth sparked and then burst into flames, and the curtains that hung right beside the same. The smoke alarm rang with a loud piercing sound. It meant get out fast, so I dropped to the ground. The room filled with smoke as I crawled on the floor and started to make my way to the front door. The dragon got scared and decided to hide, but I knew when there's fire, we must get outside. I grabbed his thick tail, and with one mighty tug, I pulled the big dragon from under the rug. I crept down the hallway and said, follow me. I know the way out, we must meet by the tree. So mom and the dragon and I all met there, and that silly old dragon went back for his bear. We ran up and caught him and wouldn't let go. And I said, listen, dragon, here's what you should know. Don't ever go back, that's just what we'll not do. We can get a new beer, but we can't replace you. Since the fire was burning inside of our home, we went to the neighbors to borrow the phone. Mom knew what to dial and said calm and clear, here's our full street address, send the fire trucks here. Before very long, down our street, they came sailing, with bright red lights flashing and live sirens wailing. The fire crew rushed to start work on their task. They were dressed in brick boots and wore helmets and masks. They hooked up the hose and ran into the house, where they sprayed streams of water in order to douse. The table, the currants, our lovely snack too, and it didn't take long till the fire was through. The fire chief called out the door with a shout. The smoke made a mess, but the fire is out. My poor friend the dragon knew he was to blame, so he hung his head down and wept great tears of shame. One of the fire crew said, don't be sad. You knew what to do, and of that we were quite glad. You all got out safely, that's what really matters. Then she took us to see the big pump truck and ladders. The dragon put on a shiny red hat, and I asked to see where the fire crew sat. She showed us the sirens, the hoses, and the lights and the ladder they climb up to reach higher heights. The rest of the fire crew checked all the rooms while a fan on the door blew out the gray smokes and the fumes. Then the dragon and I, we sat down for a while. I reached up and hugged him, he gave me a smile. The next time the dragon and I want to play, we'll pack up a picnic and go to the bed. We're friends tried and true, the best we can be, but I'll never again invite dragons for tea. The end. Hi, Braylon.